Hi, welcome to SCW, the wrestling channel here on YouTube.com. Thank you for choosing the channel and choosing the video. Subscribe right now, leave any comments in the comment section, like and share the video as well. It's a creative idea for you right now. What to do with the Royal Cruiserweights at WrestleMania. Now, I've seen a little rumor today that we could be seeing via ringsnews.com Austin Aries as the challenger. He's cleared to compete against Neville at WrestleMania, which I think would be actually a good standard match, but I still fear the same fears of the Cruiserweight division. Now, it seems to not be connected the characters don't seem to be fully up to speed. We don't know enough about some of the superstars that we're watching. There's not enough vested interest or reason for us to care about these superstars, why they should win and why should they should lose. Perhaps with an exception of someone like Jack Gallagher, they've put a lot of time and development into his character, which fair enough does counter the argument. And Neville has done some fantastic heel work. But as a sign of that, some of the other superstars have not been given the same detail for character. And unfortunately, that has let us down when it comes to watching 205 Live or them on Raw. Uh, as well, I'm not a fan as well with the, the purple ring ropes. I don't think that that kind of works. I just have it the same show, uh, like when it's on Raw. Have the same ropes, it's on Raw. Like when we saw Nitro back in the day, we didn't change the ropes to them for the cruiserweights when we had the great likes of Dean Malenko, Eddie Guerrero, Chris Jericho, you know, back in those days, Rey Mysterio being another one. It was all the same kind of show, and we weren't afraid to put these cruiserweights in with the heavyweight side, and I think sometimes these guys, for a little bit of something different, perhaps should be used uh, against some heavyweights on Monday Night Raw when they're are used because they're part of the raw brand so why not use them for that to maybe freshen things up just a little bit because we see the same matches on a repetitive weekly basis but with the cruiserweights as well there's nothing really different of what we see about them these days compared to some of the athletes when you watch like a Sami Zayn he Sami Zayn could do everything that we see the cruiserweights do we need to see a real different style of wrestling a little bit to make these cruiserweights stand out more which is very difficult because in the modern day of wrestling Everyone seems to be able to do everything, whether it's high-flying, technical, and these cruiserweights need to be of the same calibre, but need to almost raise that bar just a little bit more. And perhaps uh, there was that rumour that they've been toned down when it comes to Monday Night Raw, and sometimes you kind of do feel that when you're watching them. So I would let them run loose, and to make them run loose, and particularly at WrestleMania, this is what I would do. Here we go. We're finally going for the creative idea. We've seen the Intercontinental title defended in a ladder match for the last couple of years. Now, the Intercontinental title is a prestigious championship that doesn't need to be given that sort of run this year. Personally, for me, Dean Ambrose is the champion. I put him in there against Baron Corbin, or perhaps even a triple threat with Corbin and The Miz. Perhaps even John Cena, if he does lose the belt this Sunday. That's personally what I would do. But looking at the, uh, the ladder match, why not give it to the Cruiserweights? We have seven or eight of these cruiserweights. Get a real chance for them to really shine. Give it the high flying aspects. Maybe some of the superstars with the characteristics could perhaps approach the match very differently. It could be like the opener of WrestleMania as well. I don't see why we couldn't have the likes of, say, Neville, and maybe Austin Aries, maybe Tony Nice, TJ Perkins, you know, Jack Gallagher, uh, Rich Swan, Cedric Alexander. We've got Noam Dar in there as well. We could throw all those guys in there and we could have quite a, an entertaining contest seeing all these guys compete in a ladder match. I just think it would be uh, something a little bit different along the same lines of what we used to see at WrestleMania. But given that spotlight to someone who should have it, it's meant to be a high flying match. It's supposed to be very creative. And this would give the Cruiserweights something of creativity and something to do. And also, we could have then the build up with the storylines on 205 Live involving the ladder going towards the event. I think it would be kind of tasteful. I think it would be uh, certainly something to utilize with the Cruiserweights and would make them stand out. And if it worked for a success, maybe that could be a road that they could use the ladder match on a yearly basis going forth. So that's my creative idea for you there and perhaps point out some of the problems with the Cruiserweight division as well. Uh, let me know your thoughts with the Cruiserweights right now in the comments below. Do you enjoy 205 Live? Do you enjoy the Cruiserweight division in general? Is it kind of a toilet break on Raw? Let me know right now. I kind of feel at points personally on Raw, it feels a bit of a toilet break. But when it comes to watching 205 Live, I kind of enjoy it a little bit more. We do get a little bit more in depth. I really enjoy Tazawa as well. I think that he would be a great addition if you were to do some sort of ladder match as well. I think actually he's got a, a future Cruiserweight champion written all over him. I actually would like to see more of a heel as well because he looks kind of he kind of looks like a guy that could be intimidating. I think he could really have that fear factor on, on the cruiserweights. And of course, Neville is the top guy of the heels right now. Tony Nese is probably just the understudy. Austin Aries, when he is cleared, I, I don't know, he kind of is very entertaining to watch, but I kind of feel that he's going down the more heel route of a commentator. So maybe there isn't that space right now, but Tazawa, I think, has got real potential. And uh, I like the fact that maybe he could just be seen as a badass rather than really going too in-depth. He's 
someone I don't want to go to in debt room. I just want to see him go in there and beat people up. I'd like to see that on a high flying style and just brutality from Brazil. I think he's got the tools to actually turn maybe a little bit of eyes towards that cruiserweight division. But let me know your feelings anyway in the comments below. Subscribe if you haven't already subscribed to the channel right now. We're going on that road to WrestleMania. Hit the bell as well. Keep up to date with all uploads as and when they're posted. Like and share this video. Let's spread the word of SCW, the wrestling channel. But thank you for watching. Take care. Look after yourselves. And I'll see you next time here on YouTube.com. All the best. Just before we quickly sign off from the Cruiserweight division, I just want to add a little bit more that I didn't do in the first take of making this video. Uh, just a couple of pointers that I want to add for what's wrong with the Cruiserweight division in WWE. First off, I'd like to talk about the Cruiserweight Classic itself. Um, I think how badly booked when you look back at it is when you look to the Cruiserweight division that's developed from it. I mean, most of the superstars that we see on a weekly basis were eliminated over in the first round or the second round, so they already appear in that sort of tournament to look like jobbers so that we're watching jobbers every week you have to look at the people that the, the tournament was built around I mean TJ Perkins won the thing uh, Grand Metalik who was the runner up is supposedly going to be coming to 205 shortly was used on the very first episode of Raw but hasn't been used since which makes you think he's just been a forgotten man when you look at then the other two people that were in the semi-finals, look at Kota Ibushi, who it kind of feels like the tour was built around to begin with, and Zack Sabre Jr., neither of them are on full-time WWE contracts. So you look and say, well, why did they get so far when of the talent that's going to be used further in the long term could have been used to go over these guys who would then been given some credibility when you then go to 205 Live? So I kind of just feel a little bit that this is perhaps one of the reasons why uh, the Cruiserweight division is not seen so seriously for the people that did watch it. We're seeing a lot of people that were eliminated in the first round of in the second round you know the Bollywood boys have been involved on, on 205 Live okay they're back on NXT now but still they were won the first match on 205 Live and they were both eliminated in the first round of the Cruiserweight Classic so it just kind of for me there is that damaging effect where I think a lot of stars perhaps have been hampered through that tournament and then been used on 205 Live and all of a sudden they're meant to be creditable and they lost on the one match that they televised before uh, Jack Gallagher is a big star at the moment on 205 Live and perhaps when he's used on Raw as well was eliminated in the second round round and it was eliminated by Tazawa maybe if they'd actually built the tournament differently and Jack Gallagher got to the quarters or even the semi-finals it would look a lot better when you see that now on WWE TV just just a personal opinion for my take on that and as well I'd like to say with some of the characters particularly Cedric Alexander I'm going to have a dig on here is the entrance music and some of the music I just don't think connects and I think it's a big part of a character when they come through the curtain You've only got to look at people like Bobby Roode with his Glorious, with uh, Shinsuke Nakamura with his music in NXT. They do a lot of that music at the moment a, a lot better than what they had previously. But I kind of feel the Cruiserweight like Classic competitors, they just don't have this music which grips you straight to what the character, what the meaning. And so, you know, some, some of them just seem a bit lackluster. I mean, Cedric Alexander in particular, that theme music when it comes to the ring, it seems it takes about half an hour for it really to kick in and for us to actually start getting some meaning behind it. So um, those are two of my other real digs with the Cruiserweight vision where I think the WWE could or perhaps uh, improved on. It would be nice to see if Kota Ibushi would come back and do uh, a one or two of appearances and lose to maybe some of these guys on 205 or even uh, a sort of um, a landmark pay-per-view area whether it be on NXT. Just something to really get someone over because uh, it kind of just feels at the moment that the whole division at the moment needs some star power that can put some of this talent over. Maybe with Neville coming in eventually we'll put someone over. Maybe Austin Aries as well but these guys have the same dominant from the start really when they first come into the division just to kind of see that these are the head guys that actually when the, they do lose to some of the people that are in the Cruiserweight Classic and maybe then it has some momentum and actually builds these stars that we're unfamiliar with and build them up a bit further. So that's me adding a little bit more just to this video very quickly but uh, thank you for watching the second part uh, just before switching off. Subscribe right now, leave in the comments in the comment section. Let me know your feelings in the comments below right now of course what you think about the Cruiserweight division if you do enjoy it, if you agree with these points and where else you think that maybe there is a critique for the Royal Cruiserweights and watch them on 205 Live as well. But that's everything for now. Thank you for watching. This is SCW, the wrestling channel, here on YouTube.com. Take care.